Hey, what's up, gardening friends? Jeff here, Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I'm great, sitting outside, not outside, in my grow space, with my philodendron that needs to be repotted. Very badly needs to be repotted. This poor plant is just, it's in a terrible, mix i'm not a fan of this potting soil at all this is still in the same pot it was in from when i ordered this from logies here maybe this was a nice blend for them at their greenhouse it doesn't so much work for me in my environment it just it stays wet for way too long and i think that in the long run if i don't do something about it it will kill the plant here's the variety philodendron lickety split the sport of the philodendron bipinata fidum which I, these aren't even philodendrons anymore these are now thomata phylum still for the sake of not confusing people too much i'll probably just keep calling it a philodendron in this video even though this is now a different plant and this is actually a pretty cool sport of just the regular bipinata for them. The lickety split has much, much, much deeper cuts into those leaves and see how they go in a lot further. So the foliage on these is just a little bit more wild and fun and frilly. I'm a big fan. I like it a lot. So I'd like to take good care of it. I had this plant outside all spring and summer and part of fall. So I'm expecting a I was thinking that there would be a lot of nasty stuff going on down here, but the roots do look, for the most part, they look pretty healthy. It doesn't seem to be crawling with critters or anything like that. I did just water this yesterday. I always like to make sure that the plants have been watered at least a day before I repot them so that they're nice and sturdy. The cell walls and everything are firm. I don't have to worry as much about breakage, bruising, or causing much damage to the plants. Look how cute. It's such a cute little plant. I'm gonna try and get the bulk of the soil out of this mix, particularly from the very center from in here. There's stuff, stuff. These are tough sturdy plants so while i am gentle so i will sometimes go in a little bit more heavily with my fingers and just kind of start pulling away and tearing doing the best i can to not rip the roots up too much i probably should have mentioned i don't really have like a huge objective in this video i was just going to repot this so i turn the camera on talk about these plants a little bit the history of this philodendron is actually fairly interesting though not too unsimilar from a lot of other plants that have been renamed. I don't think it was until 2018 that they went ahead and had the DNA analyses and everything in line to go ahead and move this over to being the thematophyllum. There was an interesting flip that happened. I want to say sometimes in the 50s or 60s. Don't quote me on that. This isn't a history lesson. It's just thoughts spilling out of my head from what I recall reading like, I don't know, a year ago. <laughs> Did not do my homework for the video. But that happens sometimes, especially when you're just like, I'm gonna pick up the camera and repot something, we'll have a talk. The plant had been moved around multiple times since like the 1800s, something like that. Naming plants now is difficult with all of the things we have at our disposal. Imagine back in the 19th century, this is the 17th century, when they were only working with dried up crusty leaves that had been brought over on ships. That's how they had to do it. That's how the researchers had to do things. They had to go out, collect the plants, different cuttings from around the plants. Eventually they started sketching them out as well. But by the time a, you know, a boat can take a leaf from a plant, all the way across the Atlantic over to Europe, where the majority of the plant research was going on at that time. They, I mean, they didn't necessarily look that great. Samples didn't hold up that well. I meant to actually talk about this in the Terrarium Tuesday videos, but I don't think I ever got around to it. It was trying to solve that problem that's what spurred terrariums even being a thing. Much more effective to go ahead and try and get the smaller plants into some sort of enclosure, some sort of glass enclosure where they can keep growing during their transport and have the live ones to work with when they arrive to the people who are researching them. So that's my understanding. I'm sure there's lots of different stories out there about how different things come to be. Thematophyllum is actually an interesting genus. There aren't many plants in it. I think there's only a few. If you look into their history and their origins, it's kind of neat finding out about how they even came to be, how they got split off from philodendron to be a subspecies. And they sort of put it back with the philodendron. There are a few things about this plant, about this thematophyllum here that make it make sense. <laughs> Excuse you, Leaf. That this wouldn't even really be a philodendron. And they don't have to climb. They can just grow on their own independently. I mean, that's really, that's the main thing. That's the big one right there. Okay, I think that'll do. I've gotten the bulk of the soil out. If it were nice outside, I would take this over to the hose and give it a rinse, but this really should be 
good enough. Maybe I'll go like stick it in a bucket or something, swish it around. Yeah, that was easy enough. I'm glad I did it. I just stuck it into a bowl of water and shook it around to get the excess soil out, the stuff that was really stuck up in there. It's a more gentle approach and a gentle way to get the soil out from inside those roots, particularly up in the center. By center, I mean right in here inside the plant. Sometimes that's where things get really gummed up and want to make sure that that gets cleared out just fine. I could divide this up, I suppose. I know in my past videos talking about the bipinnate ifidums, the like number one comment I get on them is about propagation, even on the video where I was talking about dividing them up. With these plants, division really is the best and safest way to go. These don't propagate through leaf cutting, so like I have a great big leaf here, but I need to cut it off because it has some cold damage on it and some insect damage from over the summer. Normally I would use my clippers for that to make a nice clean cut, but I broke my clippers, so it popped it off by hand. It's fine, kind of fine, a little bit risky. Probably shouldn't do that because clean cuts are better for preventing infection. Yeah, if you were to cut a leaf off of here, it's not likely to propagate, but not likely. I mean, it's, it's really, it's not gonna happen. There is some potential when these get bigger and these trunks start to form on them that maybe you could make a cut right in the node, right where the leaf, meets the trunk, maybe pack that with some rooting hormone and moss and wrap it up real tight and keep it moist. Maybe it would root into there. I don't know, I'm just hypothesizing. I really still think that the easiest thing to do would be to just take a nice, clean, very sharp knife and make a cut and divide them up. I could probably just pull these pieces off right here. I, like I said though, I don't want to. I'm fine with these being attached to each other. You know, sometimes people get these from the, especially the big box stores, really just in general, when you get these in like a 10 inch pot, there tend to be a whole bunch of plants clustered into one little pot and then it, that's when it makes the most sense to start dividing them up cut it into thirds something like that that way you can have more root area per plant and therefore hopefully have a nice bigger healthier plant with bigger foliage that's the idea anyways oh look at those shadows that's not what we want when there's lights everywhere it's fine i'm moving this into a clay pot it's going to breathe a little bit more easily i want this to be potted up in a manner where i don't have to worry about overwatering it that was the thing with the way this was potted up in this. For one, it needed to be repotted regardless of the soil blend. It was way too big for this pot. It wasn't quite root bound, as you saw when I pulled it out. I mean, it wasn't root bound at all, but these plants do like more area for their roots, especially if you want to get nice big leaves on them, then it just makes more sense to have it in something that's larger. But also that soil blend, while uh, the roots are nice and healthy, so I can't knock it, like I was wrong good soil, but I was just constantly worried last winter with this plant about overwatering it because it stayed moist for such a long time. I would just prefer for the plant to be in something that dries more quickly so I don't have to worry about overwatering. I want to protect it from myself, essentially. And I'm using a soil blend that is pre-moistened because it was outside in my gorilla cart and got rained on. That's why there's some pine needles in there. There's big chunky bark in here. There's plenty of perlite. There's some lava. I did add some more pumice into the mix. I know it looks very wet because it is, it's fairly damp soil. And this is a coconut based soil. One that I have noticed, I think I mentioned this anytime I talk about this particular soil, that when you water it, it deflates dramatically. So I really think it's best anyways to have it pre-moist and that way hopefully there won't be as much deflating when I pop the plants up. That's the idea anyways. There's no slow release or anything in this mix, but it does have earthworm casting. So there's some organic material in there. We'll break down and help keep the plant fed at least for a little while. Now I want to determine how high probably about here because I want that to be able to sink down some. Over the past few years as I've been repotting a lot of my house plants I have been trying to remember to put them down somewhat deeper than I used to. It doesn't always look as attractive to have them down a little bit deeper in the pots but when I'm out here watering during the winter time it's so much easier to go ahead and give the plant one or two really big drinks then I have to, to keep coming back to it and giving it a little drink at a time to make sure the soil isn't overflowing out of the top of the pot. It just takes longer. So make sure the soil gets underneath those roots as well. That's really important. No air pockets. I just think it's so nice to be able to walk up to the plant and give it a nice heavy drink and not have to stand there and just like slowly have it just sip water. And then of course avoiding the mess. That's a big part of it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and set this in here. <laughs> Doesn't really fit. Give this a nice heavy drink. Yeah, you'll be able to see here what I'm talking about, how the soil does deflate, even when it's pre-moistened, that's still going to go down 
a fair amount, which is okay. That helps get the air pockets out of there. Yeah. Lots and lots and lots of bubbles. Learning moment. It would appear that the hole in this pot is just not big enough. The water wasn't draining out of there as much as I would have liked it to. I took a chopstick, pushed that through the top of the soil and ran that through the bottom, through the bottom hole. I know it's kind of hard to see, but that drainage hole just not quite big enough. So I have different options here. Ultimately, I'm going to have to unpop this and redo it regardless of what I decide to do. It's going to have to come out of there. So the first option is to go ahead and pull this out, let a lot of that water drain out get the plant out of there, get the soil out, and I can put a more hefty layer of gravel on the bottom that will allow water to flow through more cleanly and not clog that hole up. The other option would be to just grab a different pot that I think would probably be the smartest thing to do. And then the third option is to drill a bigger hole, which I have the stuff to do that, but I just don't feel like it. I think I mentioned it's cold, it's raining outside. I prefer to drill my pottery outdoors. It's just, it gets so messy with all the different particles that go everywhere and you can use the garden hose to have the water moving through things instead of just a spray bottle. It's just easier. I don't like doing it inside. It's kind of a pain in the butt to do the hole drilling inside the house. So I think I should probably just grab a different pot, right? Well, that ended up being much, much, much messier than I had anticipated. I picked that pot up and I was looking at that hole and I thought, you know, this might be too small. Well, we gotta trust our instincts. I was right about that. So I went ahead and I just grabbed, like literally this is the closest eight inch pot I had to where I'm sitting. So I just grabbed it. Not really all that concerned about what the pot looks like that this is in. I'm more concerned about getting this into a mix to where it can put out new foliage and it can support itself and not be all limp and weak and sad looking. Now the plant can go ahead, put out some new roots and hopefully be able to support itself because the new leaves that it's been putting out have just been all blech. The new foliage that's been coming out of it just hasn't been looking great. Like it hasn't had much spotting or anything on it. There's some frost damage and bug damage on the older leaves. That's just from being outside. I'm not really very concerned about that. I did have some peroxide out here with me just in case it looked like I needed to give the roots a rinse just in case there were bugs or some signs of some sort of bacterial something going on but it didn't really look like it to me the only i only saw one bug in the potting mix and it was just a little isopod i hope this doesn't start overflowing on the table that's pretty though you know because i wouldn't want to get the table wet right yeah i think we surpassed that there is one disadvantage to using pre-moistened soil and that disadvantage is that it can be pretty tricky to water things into the point where it can get things nice and cleaned off around the edges of the pot. And the same with any soil that can collect around the leaves. Typically when I do my first watering, that's when I'll just pour water over those spots, over the edges of the pot and that gets it looking nice and clean and tidy. That's more difficult to do when the soil's pre-moistened because in order to do that, you have to water the plant, let it drain through and then water it and get things rinsed off, let it drain through. If it's pre-moistened then the risk of overwatering the plant is much higher that's not something i'm really concerned about with the soil blend it does drain fairly quickly probably much more quickly than is even necessary for this plant yeah that was it that was the last thing forgot to mention that that was important that's it little plant chat it's a little talky time when i repot my thomatophyllum by panidifidum. I'm glad that I got this done. Having a larger area for those roots to grow should encourage some bigger, more happy foliage. That's, I mean, that's the whole point, right? Gotta give them room to grow if you want them to get nice and big. When these are this small, I would expect to repot them probably once a year. Depending on what this does over the winter, I may even repot it midsummer just so that I'm not back in this position where I'm repotting it when temperatures are a little bit cooler and just not quite as ideal for a repot. I don't know, we will see. Chances are I'll forget and just be doing the same thing about the same time next year. I really want to come in and start pruning off some of that old foliage that has all the spots on it and just the damage from being outdoors. And it, th this plant did take a little bit of frost, just a little, it has some cold damage on it. I think it'd be smarter to just kind of leave it be and give it some time, let it adjust. For a couple weeks and then I'll come in and I'll cut out all the stuff that's hanging down inside. I really, I might cut this out, driving me kind of nuts. So I'm probably, okay, I did it, that one's gone. That was a really old leaf. It was all the way down there at the very base and it was just ugly, it had to go. Feel the same about this one now, but I'm gonna wait just to be safe. I just wanna leave it alone, let the plant adjust. That's gonna do it. Hope everybody's doing well, having a great day and a great life and everything's just going beautifully for you. Comment down below, tips, tricks, suggestions, some different things you do with some of your aeroids when 
repotting them. Everybody has fun different techniques that they work with with their soil blends and the types of pots that they like to use. It's just fascinating what goes on between the different climates and how people have to do things to keep the plants going. Not a lot with these though. They're kind of a set it and forget it plant. I mean you need to water them. Take care of it obviously. But what I mean is they're just not really very fussy as long as their basic needs are met. Okay time to go. As always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.